Exercise is vital for your overall health and well-being, but what if exercise is a challenge for you due to a physical limitation or hectic schedule? In this video, I'll discuss the pathways to weight loss that do not involve exercise. When you include exercise in your weight loss program, you get some added perks, including the reduction of the harmful visceral or belly fat and a reduction in insulin resistance, which will make it easier for you to not regain the weight after it's lost. So regular exercise should always be something that you're striving to bring into your life. However, the reality is that some of us have health or physical limitations that make exercise challenging, or we have work or family obligations that take priority. To lose weight without exercise, some reduction in your diet must take place. What you choose to cut back on is up to you. And you have three choices. You can limit calories, you can limit a certain type of food, or you can limit the number of hours you consume food during the day. So let's look at each of these options. One way to diet for weight loss is to limit your calorie intake. And there's a lot of evidence to support the fact that reducing the calories that you take in results in weight loss. So calories are important, but how you go about reducing those calories, in my opinion, will make a big difference in how much success you ultimately achieve. And this leads us into the conversation of the second thing that can be limited in your diet to lose weight without exercise. And that is the limitation of a certain type of food. Reducing your intake of sugar and refined carbohydrates, which you often hear me referring to as the three C's, cookies, cakes, and candies, is the best option for anyone, whether you prefer a more animal or plant-based diet. And if these foods and sweetened drinks are a part of your diet, reducing them will result in weight loss without a need for exercise. But traditional diets also have us reduce a type of macronutrient, which gives us the option of either following a low fat or a low carb diet. Now, if you follow my channel, you know that I side with low carb dieting. What you might not know is that I started out here on YouTube with a much more of a slant toward low fat dieting. It wasn't until I watched my husband who had struggled with his weight for our entire married life, uh, lose 80 pounds that I truly made the switch. Um, and if you're interested in learning about his journey, we've chronicled that on my second YouTube channel that I share with him that we call Two Fit Docs. Hi, I'm Dr. Keith. I'm one half of Two Fit Docs, but I haven't always been fit. Welcome to Two Fit Docs, where we turn weight loss resistance into weight loss results. So I've studied both diets, and there is evidence that both of them work as long as you are choosing healthy whole foods. One challenge of low-fat dieting, however, is that it has been the diet of choice for the past 60 years, which was a time period in which we saw obesity rates skyrocket. And this disconnect between the diet and results may be because many people find low-fat diets difficult to stick with due to hunger. And this feeling of hunger may be explained by looking at the nature of a carbohydrate versus a food that is primarily fat. Carbohydrates are a quick and easy source of energy for your body, and that is not a bad thing by any means, uh, but it does mean that they will burn up quickly, much like twigs on a fire. So you get a short burst of energy from your high carbohydrate meal, but if you want that energetic fire to keep burning, you're going to have to continually refuel by eating. Uh, if you try to put off eating, your body reminds you by turning on hunger and cravings. Dietary fats, on the other hand, digest and burn at a much slower rate, so they are like the logs on a fire. Because the available energy is slower to burn away, hunger and cravings stay away longer. And a low-carb, high-fat diet also puts your body in a hormonal state that favors the burning of body fat over fat storage. And it does this by keeping the level of insulin, which is the fat-storing hormone, low in your blood. So we see that the calories we get from carbs and dietary fats are not alike. They have vastly different effects on your blood insulin levels. Carbohydrates, particularly refined carbs, cause a significant spike in insulin, whereas dietary fats produce little or no increase in insulin. And if you'd like to learn more about low carb dieting, I have many videos that you can access through my channel page. Uh, but for this video, I want to share the third way that you can lose weight without exercise. 
and that is by limiting the number of hours you consume food in a 24-hour period. In other words, practice intermittent fasting. Fasting involves splitting your day between a period of eating and not eating or fasting. A popular way to practice intermittent fasting is to stop eating after dinner, skip breakfast, and break your fast at lunchtime the next day. Now, if you're new to fasting, you may need to work up to this level before you feel comfortable. But when you fast on a regular basis, you'll find that it helps you to lose weight without having a need for exercise. And it does this in two ways. First, it naturally reduces calories by eliminating high caloric habits like eating refined snacks at bedtime and consuming alcohol in the evening. Also, while you're fasting, there's no food coming in. So we see that it has the same fat releasing effect as a low carb diet because the level of insulin in your blood would not rise during your fast. In fact, if you wanna double the effectiveness of your weight loss, combine a low carb, high fat diet with intermittent fasting. Both will limit fat storage and you'll find that eating this way keeps hunger under control, making it easier for you to fast. So we discussed three ways that you can alter your diet to lose weight without exercise. You can limit your calorie intake, limit your carb intake, or limit the hours that you eat during a day. When the excess weight comes off, you may find that you feel more inclined to exercise and that will prove to enhance your overall weight loss and health even farther. And I wanna share an email I received that I hope will support what I just said and encourage you that there is hope despite your starting point. Tim wrote, I am a 5 foot 11, 53 year old man who on July 8th of 2019 weighed 410 pounds. I have been dealing with psoriatic arthritis for over 10 years. I was diabetic with an A1C of 6.5, heart issues, edema, and severe sleep apnea and had recently bought a medical scooter because I couldn't walk more than 100 yards without developing crippling pain. Both my hips needed replaced, but no one was willing to risk my life with the surgery. Because of you and your 0123 plan in videos as well as the two fit docs, I have lost 105 pounds in 11 months with no real exercise as I would not walk because of my hips until I started riding a bike in May. My A1C is now 5.6 with no medicine, my edema is gone, and hair has started to regrow on my lower legs. Since May, I am riding a bike about 200 miles a month. Tim went on to mention that he now follows a low carb diet and intermittent fasting, but you can start the same way he did by learning my free 0123 strategy. Take this first step, I'll point to where you can download that strategy. Thanks so much for watching. Please help me out by subscribing to my channel and then click the bell icon so you receive a notification when my next video is released. Till then, have a great week.